Good morning. Today is Thursday, January the 12th. The time right now in Kuala Lumpur is uh, 10.27 in the morning and overnight on Wall Street, we see a bit of a uh, rally. And uh, of course, it's, uh, this is in anticipation of tonight's uh, uh, consumer price index uh, at 9.30 p.m. So overnight, we can see that the Dow Jones actually managed to cross over the 34,000 levels, which is at the 61.8% replacement from the high of 34,700 to the low of 32,573. So basically, the market is just marginally above the 61.8% replacement, and this is going to be crucial going into tonight. Market expectation is that maybe perhaps the Federal Reserve is going to hike, uh, is, uh, is going to, uh, I wouldn't say that, okay, I would say that the market expectation is for the CPI numbers to continue to ease back from the last June high of 9.1%. This is the headline CPI numbers. Of course, the, the current uh, last reported number was 7.1%. So the market has, according to the CPI official headline numbers, uh, inflation in the U.S. has actually come off by two percentage point, and that is obviously a trend. Uh, so most market participants are expecting this trend to continue uh, southwards. Maybe this time it will go below seven percent. So if that's the case, then maybe the Federal Reserve will have less incentive to continue to hike rates as aggressive as they had. Now, if you remember, in fact, uh, in December, which is uh, last month, uh, the Federal Reserve has actually eased off. Uh, it's very aggressive rate hike from 75 basis points to 50 basis points. So the market expectation right now is that market, depending on tonight's CPI numbers, if it continue its downward trend, uh, it's likely to cause the Federal Reserve to only hike 0 0.25, which is 25 basis points. So I think that that may be a little bit too optimistic. So be very careful about the market reacting to a less than stellar uh, CPI numbers that uh, we are all anticipating tonight. Okay, so this is the highlight of the week itself. So going forward to tonight, remember it's 9.30 and anything that is less, uh, which is more than 7.1, which is the last December uh, CPI numbers, is going to cause the market to basically sell off. So do watch out for that move. Okay. Uh, over in the S&P 500, we also saw the same similar uh, optimism. Uh, price right now in the S&P 500 is just trading just below the 4,000 level, that's 3,971 at the high last night. And this is basically a 61.8. Uh, 61.8% uh, retracement of the high that we saw in December at 4100 and a low of 3761. So again, this is going to be a sensitive level because typically when the market rebounds, uh, one of the most uh, common areas in which it will actually be kept is either at the 50% mark or the 61.8%. So right now, S&P 500 is right now at the very sensitive level. Whether or not it will continue its upward march or whether it will start to topple over, we will have to see tonight as the market reacts to the CPI numbers. When we look at the NASDAQ 100, we can see that we also have a bit of a rush up last night. Uh, NASDAQ 100 traded to a high of 11,422. It's already beyond the 38.2% retracement and it's getting very, very close to the 50% retracement from the last month high of 12,166 to the low of uh, one, uh, sorry, 10,666. 671. Okay, so basically we are now at the crucial level. Remember, I said 50%, if not 61.8%. Okay, so we are both uh, all three major equity index, of course, led by the Dow Jones is already rebounded quite a fair bit, whereas SP 500 is at 61.8, and the NASDAQ being the weakest of the three uh, is only approaching the 50% replacement point. So we again uh, will have to watch how the market reacts tonight. Over in Hong Kong, we can see that the Hong Kong market remains very, very positive. Uh, so this morning we have a high of 21,725, which is getting very close to my original target of 22,118, which is in turn not far away from the last June high of 22,450. So basically the Hong Kong market remains very upbeat. We will continue to see. Over at the Shanghai Composite Index, we did see that the market now is pulling back a little bit. Now this high that we saw at 3,186 was actually traded on Monday itself. So over the last 48 hours, we have no new high for the Shanghai Composite Index. Of course, we do not know later on in the uh, uh, later half of the day itself whether uh, this Shanghai Composite Index will actually attempt to rally higher. Okay, I think a challenge of the last December high of 3,225 is a very distinct possibility. In fact, the structure that I see here is likely to be a larger degree three wave. And if this is the case, I think the scope for the market uh, to even test the August high of 3,308 is also uh, cannot be dismissed. I would think that uh, if this is a, a larger degree three wave, then the upside 
potential is actually quite large. Okay, so do watch out for the potential rally in Chinese equity uh, index here. So over in the Shanghai, uh, sorry, in the Nikkei 225, which is the Japanese equity index, we can see that the market is also very buoyant, but it's already approaching this key point here, which is 226,630. Okay, now this structure here is very different from what we saw in both the Nik uh, Hang Seng and the uh, Shanghai Composite Index. Basically, we possibly is looking at a larger degree three way, which is downside bias. And uh, but for the time being, we can see that this market here, uh, this structure here from a high of the November high of 28,502 does not look complete, okay? So I'm thinking that this structure looks remarkably uh, like a potential five way down. And if this is the case, the market may actually be kept near the 26,630 levels, and which is very, very close right now. This morning, we have a high of 26,573. So this being the, uh, if this is the fourth wave high, then maybe we should have another uh, challenge to the downside easily will take out the 25,630, which is so far the low in January. Of course, of course January is only uh, in the second week, so we cannot say that this is the ultimate low for January yet. But for so far, this 25,630 seems to be the low for now. But I think the market may actually challenge and take out this 25,630 going forward. Okay? Now, when we look at the currency rate, we can see that the dollar actually is off a little bit last night from a high of 133. So we can see that the market is pulling back and within the downward uh, uh, price channel, there's every possibility market uh, for dollar yen may actually be trading much lower uh, to take out the 129 half that we saw earlier on last week. So is this a possibility? I think it's always a possibility. Alternatively, if the market trades to the upside and take out 134, uh, 13480 then this could be a three wave rally again this will be a different structure altogether just because the market breakout of a downward uh, uh, price channel doesn't mean the market has turned around uh, we will have to see uh, what kind of new pattern or uh, new structure the, the price pattern will, will evolve into okay selling overnight we do not have a new high for the week itself we have 122.11 traded uh, i think on monday itself so this high remains intact uh, the market has very little incentive uh, to want to trade downwards so we can see that the price remains quite elevated there's a possibility the price may continue to edge even higher over in the uh, euro versus dollar it is definitely a lot more firmer than the sterling versus dollar because overnight we have a marginal new high at 107.80 so you can see that this price wants to go up so ever since the market took out this near term uh, resistance like it has never looked back because the, the way it break out of this very minor resistance uh, does uh, imply that the market, at least for now, uh, is looking further upside potential. So it is within this price structure here. Okay. Over in the Aussie, we can see that Aussie do not also have a new high for the week. Uh, this high that we saw was actually traded on Monday itself at 0 0.6950. So it's very, very close. And the market looks like it wants to attend even higher rate. Okay. So do watch out for extended run uh, in all the currencies. And that means to say the dollar near term is likely to look to be quite weak. Okay. So when we look at the dollar versus the Canadian dollars, we also see this weakness in the dollar because the market has not been able to recover meaningfully from a low of 1.3350 that it was uh, that it actually traded on Monday. So the bias is to the downside. We possibly can see more uh, downward spiral in the dollar versus the Canadian. Okay. Over in crude oil, as expected, uh, remember yesterday I did mention that there's possibility we can see a reversal in energy prices. And true enough, yesterday we see uh, crude oil prices rallying up to this morning high of seventy eight dollars and six cents. So this is this is a far cry from the where it was at seventy two dollars and forty five cents. So this appears to be building up to be a potential three wave structure for now. So we can only say that for now it's going to be like a corrective pattern. So the it's undeniable the the bias right now is to the upside. Target range is about eighty three dollars eighty seven cents to eighty six dollars and ninety seven cents. So from where it is right now at about seventy eight dollars, there's a bit of a uh, there's a bit of a room for the market to actually go even higher. Uh, to take out the uh, so far this month high at eighty one dollars fifty cents is almost a given. So I would like to trade on the upside of this move. Uh, yesterday I was saying that I'm looking for a, a, a sensible level to go long, but at the get go the market just continues to go higher. So if you don't come back to a good price for me to actually anchor, but it's okay. Uh, so long as the price wants to go up, then I know at some point in the market, if it's ever reversed uh, for whatever reason, then I know I want to be able to get in at a good price. Okay. Over in uh, precious metals, you can see uh, metals itself remains very, very well beat. 
the high trader, we have a marginal new high overnight at 1,880.60. So this last looks like in the market doesn't want to pull back. I've been waiting for the pullback. Uh, still, it's not happening. And of course, at this price, like I mentioned earlier, uh, over the last few days, I am not looking to buy at this current level. I would be more comfortable if the market have a more decent pullback, ideally to test the support line here. But uh, unless it happens, I'm not going to do anything. Okay? Over in silver, well, of course, we do not see a meaningful retracement. Uh, so far, the market has actually tested $23.22. Okay? But this is something different. You can see that the silver market on the four hours time frame, this is a reversal pattern. And although the market has broken below the price channel, that does not mean the market is coming down. In fact, the appearance of this particular bar here at the low of $23.21, it does appear the support that the market may actually be wanting to go up. So now if you do a very short term uh, extension of this near term uh, resistance here, then that will, that will give you a clue. Okay, uh, If the market is able to break up convincingly above this near term resistance line, I think the market uh, bias is to the upside. I've always been very bullish on silver and appearance of a reversal pattern despite price picking out the, price, uh, the rising price channel is to me, a sign, a sign that market wants to go up. Okay, so maybe a good idea is to consider whether you want to go in to buy silver. Although this is not my ideal price to get in, I was hoping the market can go down to twenty two dollars and thirty cents to twenty two dollars and seventy cents area. So again, we will have to watch. Okay, uh, over in uh, cryptocurrency, we continue to see a rush to the upside. This morning, we have seen a third of Bitcoin to eighteen thousand, almost three hundred dollars. So this is very bullish development because the market has already taken what we would, would have been a uh, seem to be part of a retracement. Now the market looks like it is about to revert. Okay, having taken out the minor resistance line here, so this could be significant because this line goes back all the way, all the way back to uh, you know the high here that we saw in August last year. So this is a significant uh, resistance line here. So the market has taken out this level very very convincingly. Uh, but of course, we are not ending the four hour time frame chart yet. So, if this market actually ends above and close above this uh, 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 medium term uh, resistance line, that could underpin the market to even take out the 18,375 that we lost, we last saw in December. Okay, same thing, the same sentiment that we see in Bitcoin is also replicated in the Ethereum. This morning, we saw a surge to $1,417. And it's getting very, very close to my uh, uh, counter trend target of 1425.7. So, again, the market is currently uh, in a good mood to go higher because it also take out a medium term resistance line. Okay. Uh, Ripple has not been moving until yesterday. You can see that the market actually punched through the uh, resistance line and to uh, trade it to a high of 0 0.3784. And this does lay the, uh, lay the foundation for further up uh, a stop uh, to my target at uh, 0 0.39. So again, this is a market that also for the first time uh, since uh, the market started to uh, come alive, we have seen the bid coming in only yesterday. So maybe it has a little bit more to go. You look at Cardano, Cardano definitely have not seen new high, but you can see that the search from the December low has been very, very uh, uh, encouraging. And although the market did break uh, this, medium term resistance line and come back down. But by and large, okay, it wants to go up. So this structure does tell me that if we're going to see a pullback, ideally to the 50% point, it is still good to buy. Okay, I do I do think that structurally uh, and technically this market is gearing to trade to the upside. Now, of course, the same thing is going to be said for Sol uh, Solana. Solana uh, rally from the late December low of $7.95 uh, is very, very constructive. So yes, uh, we have seen this morning prices attempt to go up from a low of uh, $15.29. So this is setting the stage for further price uh, uh, to the upside. My target for this near term is $18.09, and we are not that far away. Again, this is all I have for you for tonight. Now remember, tonight CPI number is going to be released at 9.30 p.m. So do watch out for this because I think it will cause some kind of volatility to spike uh, at the release of this number. In the meantime, good take care, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.